that our county knows is very important to call. And so it's all these people on the young side of the other school. Testing, testing, good morning. It's like my voice didn't sound loud enough. Good morning! <laughs> and welcome, 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 welcome. Here in this house, we come to honor God. We come to develop Christians. We come to connect people and we come to love everybody. Amen? Amen. And that's why we are here. But mainly we're here to honor God. To give him the glory that only he deserves. Amen? Amen. As we prepare for our service today, I'd just like for us to just close our eyes for a moment. And focus. Focus on where I would be if it had not been for the Lord. Hmm. What would have happened in my life if it had not been for the Lord? God, as we think about that in our hearts and our mind today, God, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for bringing us through some, some tough times. Bringing us through some some storms, Heavenly Father, that we don't know how we got in that. And God, we want to say thank you, Father, for uh, delivering us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we couldn't say it enough so that you know how much we really appreciate and really love you. Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would just pour out a blessing upon each person under the sound of my voice. Yes, Lord, my brothers and my sisters do need a blessing today. And God, I ask in the name of your son that you would just 
overload them with good things. Father, I pray that you would just, as they lift their hands out or raise their hands up, Father, that you would just fill them to the overflow. Because God, we know, Heavenly Father, we know, Lord God, that we fall short sometimes. But God, we know that if we keep reaching up to you, if we keep looking at you, oh God, we know that storm, that, that tornado, that, that, that thing that's going around in our lives, Father, if we keep looking up, we're going to see the sun. We're going to see the sky. We're going to see you, Lord God, in all that we do. And God, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, please pour out a blessing upon my, the people today. And God, I'm going to ask, Father, in the name of your Son, that you just watch over our pastor today, Heavenly Father. Continue to watch over him and protect him. And he's continuing to do the job that you've called him to do. And we lift it all up to you now. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our song of worship this morning can actually be found in your hymnal. You want to join in? You probably know because it's an old classic, 326. If you want to look on, but you probably know the song says, "There's a sweet, sweet."
as we, as we prepare to come to the altar this morning, we want to come and we want to lay our burdens down before God. I know there might be some things that you're going through that you're dealing with, but now God said, bring them to me. All those that are weak and heavy laden, please come and lay your burdens down here at the altar. You're all welcome to come. Please come. <laughs>
so good to be in the house of God. I, I look back there and see, I call her Miss Missy, my little granddaughter. Look at her. She is something else. She's a busy little lady. <laughs> busy is an understatement for that little lady there. And I see Kyan, my grandson. He's an all-star. He's a soccer player. He loves to play soccer. He, we think he should be a baseball player, but he, he think he should play soccer, but we're gonna still push baseball on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're pushing it, and he's pushing away. <laughs> Amen, but I am just thankful to see them. I'm thankful to see all of you, you know, because we are, we're here to worship God. Amen. We're here to look at him. You know, we, we go through a lot in our lives. We see a lot of stuff, a lot of things are happening. And I'm telling you, if God wasn't in our lives, boy, where would we be now? Amen? Amen. I mean, if you stop, it, it's hard, for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have to laugh at myself. I laugh, I'm laughing at me, okay? I'm not laughing at you. Then I, I look at this boob tube, the TV, and I see the stuff going on. And I know I need to turn it off. I know I, I should, but, but then they'll say something else. They'll go like, but you see that? No. But, 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 but. And I'm going through it. I'm going through it because it's so much turmoil in our world today. I thank God that he saved me. And I thank God that you are all here today to worship God together in this house, amen? amen. It's a reason why you're here. It isn't just by, hap by happenstance or, or, or you got lucky. No, no, you're here for a reason. And that reason is to worship God. I wanna ask all of you, if you have something on your heart, we have a few moments, I mean, I got a, I got about 10 or 15 pages that I want to <laughs> that I want to go through here, okay? So get comfortable, take your shoes off if you need to. Okay? Go get some water if you want to. Come on back. All right. Because uh, <laughs> I got something I want to say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody? Prayer requests. I just want to hear your voice. What do you want me to pray for? I, I got my blank sheet of paper, and I first thing I got down here, I've already written something down on my, on my prayer. Line, on my prayer, I want to pray for my dear sister, Marty, who's having a birthday tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Let's get Marty. <laughs> Be, be careful what you tell the pastor because he's sure going to say it up here, amen? But happy birthday, Marty. We love you. We thank you for all that you do. Happy, happy, happy. And we're going to have that birthday song. Do we have a birthday song that we could play real quick before? Everybody, let's go. Happy birthday. I love your family. I love everything you guys do. Who will be first to tell me what's on your heart? What do you want the church to pray for? And guess what? I take these prayers seriously. 
I, I, you know, it's so funny. I, I brought a book. I, this, is, this book says, pray until something happens. My dad gave me this book. My dad, I've had this for 20, 30 years. And I just happened to see it this morning. Amen? Isn't that something? How God works things out. My dad gave me this book, and I put my notes in it, and I got all my stuff. Anyway, let me stop. <laughs> I'm going to get teary. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> but I just want to hear what's on your heart, and what do you like for me to pray for? Yes, Donna, please tell us what's on your heart. All right, I'm going to make, try to make this real quick. So I have a cousin, first cousin. Uh, he's in a retirement home in Downey, and basically I'm his caregiver. Uh, in 2017, we were talking, and he revealed to me that he had a daughter that I didn't know about. So he has two, uh, two daughters that I do know about. Uh, anyway, long story short, I located her, and she came down this weekend with her son, and her sister, her oldest sister that she's never met, is coming in next weekend, and they're going to meet at my house. I want to ask for prayer for both of them. They, one is 50 and the other is about to turn 44 and they've never met. Wow. Amen. Amen. Good. So please pray for Nisa and Nyla. Nisa? Nisa. Nisa. And Nyla say and Nyla. And me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. We will, Donna. We'll be. Yes. Cliff, would you please stand? Oh, yeah. Pastor, uh, I'd like to. Pray for Continue, you already mentioned their name. Our brother Ella Smith and our brother Bill West, you've already mentioned their names, but continue to pray for them and their recovery. And I'd also like for you to pray for my nephew in Texas, in Marty's, uh, who is in hospice, uh, really not doing well at all. But just pray for he and his mother. And uh, what's his name? Yes, his name is, uh, he's named after me, his name is John Clifton. Okay. He's 40 years old and was just saddened by, by his status. Keep the family in prayer. Thank you. Good. Good. God bless you. We'll really? be praying for you. Yes, Beth. Yes. This is, a, Laura. <laughs> this is a critical month for my business. Um, I have a major buyer uh, event uh, at, uh, this, week, uh, this month and also a trade business in Canada. And everything that could go wrong is going wrong. So I'm just praying that the Lord will uh, uh, get all of my mixes, all of my graphics, all of my prototypes, everything will just come together so that I can meet my deadlines um, um, for uh, to be able to be prepared for my buyer's meeting. Um, that he'll I'll just have breakthrough and increase, and that I'll come out of these meetings with a major buyer. Amen. We'll pray for that. I know she's been working really hard to get the yeah. cookie business off the yeah. off the ground, and it's it's, it's moving slow. Ash, um, just for my friend, his name is Jody. He lost his father this weekend, mm -hmm. and he's a, he's a very prominent man. And actually, my mom let me know before I knew because it was in the news. So I just want you to pray for him because it's. One thing to do with the loss of someone you love personally, but to have it such a public thing, mm -hmm. I just want to pray for this peace. Amen. And it's well. a joke. Well. Good. Yes, Amir. Uh, I just got back from Texas yesterday, and apparently there's a category one hurricane headed to Houston. For some reason, hurricanes love Houston, but I just want to pray for <laughs> They do. You got out just in time, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> just in time. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, Kathy. Hey, I'd like to have a prayer for my sister Kelly and my sister Chris and my mom, Josephine, and also myself. My mom is living, so it's a lot of work to take care of her. So ask God, pray for God to strengthen our bodies, you know, to keep honoring our mother. Yes. I would like to um, ask for prayer for my daughter, Raven, and as she is uh, navigating her life uh, in her 20s. 
and just ask that she can hear God's voice in her direction. Uh, I'd like to ask for prayer for our church as we look for a replacement for the school and know that sometimes you have to move stuff out of the way and bring in what's needed and what's for us. So I'm excited actually for our church. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and I'd like to ask for prayer for my family. Um, my entire family as we navigate um, uh, a family member who is very troubled and is causing a lot of havoc and just so we are able to navigate the space as a family okay. successfully. Thank you, Rochelle. Yes. Um, I would like to ask for prayer as I go tomorrow for a third interview for the same place and also continue prayer for my job search and I'm happy either way because regardless of whether or not I get a job offer, uh, I heard a quote that said this week that said, with gratitude, optimism is um, sustainable. And so I feel like I'm gracious, I'm grateful, and I know whatever happens, I'm going to continue to be optimistic. Amen. 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 We're going to be praying for that. Amen. Yes, Alice. Well, I would ask for prayers for Patrice and Leo of Lyon. Patrice? Patrice and Leo, whose son who's 40, Friend's name? Friend's name was Tippy. Tippy? It's a lot. It's a lot going on. A lot going on. We have a y'all gonna have me up all night. Uh, <laughs> I remember my neighbor's page. <laughs> I refer to that as Jim Gilstrap. Well, as we come now, we're just gonna lift up all of those that spoke today and just ask the Lord to just move in their lives right now. Father, we, we come humbly before you. As I look at the names, Father, I'm, I'm feeling their urgency. I'm feeling a need. You surrounded us, Father, with so many people that sometimes it's hard to call them all out, call all the names out. But God, as those who call out to you, Heavenly Father, you know who they are. You know a daughter's in need. You you know a father is in need. You know a child is in need. You, you know a family is in, dealing with storms are in need. Uh, you know about a sister. You know about a mother that's in need. 
And God, as we come today, Father, we just want to lift it all up to you. Hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer today. Father, we are a small church, but we have a big heart. We have a lot of love in this place. And you are so welcome to just touch each person right now. Let them feel your spirit. Let them feel your love. Let them know that they're not alone in this. God, it's good to open up our hearts and minds to you today to let you know, Father, we, we are in need. But God, we're going to look to the hills where our help comes from because our help comes from you. And we thank you. And we praise you. And we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Dear Brother Ashley and the Keith Lee and the choir is going to sing a song, and then I'm going to bring this 15, 20 page message to you. I just pray you all uh, buckle down because uh, God is working on me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Turn to your Bibles with me, if you would, to the book of Judges, chapter 6. Judges, chapter 6. And when you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say, wait a minute. <laughs> Judges 6. It's not a book we look at too often, is it? Excuse me, give me money. Give me, give me money. If you, if you, get, if you get past um, Joshua, it's the very next book. Judges chapter 6. What sets God so different than all of us? And there are so many ways that God is different. God never runs out of options, amen? God is a savior. He is absolute in authority and unrestricted. God is omnipotent. He has ultimate power and can do anything at all times. God always finds a way to do his will, and it will be done. There are no roadblocks. There's no dead ends. There's no last chances with God. That's why the old saints will say, the law will make a way when? Always. He'll make a way somehow. And there are some things God always finds to do. God always finds a way to direct our paths. And as you and I wander around and we go astray, at some point, God directs us back to where we should be. God loves us so much that he would leave the 99 to look for that one rebellious one. Amen? If God has used a blessing to if it, he can use a blessing, he can use a blocking, or he can use a breaking to bring you back to where you should be. Amen? Yes. Now, we've all wandered away sometimes. We've all got lost and did some things that we shouldn't have done. But God will always find a way to deliver us. You see, we have a tendency to get ourselves in some stuff. 
But thanks be to God, he delivered us from some stuff that we had no business getting ourselves in any way. Have you ever heard of a hard head makes for a soft? Y'all know what that means, right? I thought it was a Texas term. I, but I hear a lot of people say, oh, yeah, we, we, we grew up with that. A hard head. We, we, we sometimes wonder, we sometimes get away from God, and then we wonder, where is God? The title of this message today is that if God is with you, he will make a way. But that's if he's with you. And you got to confess the Lord and Savior as your Lord and Savior and know that he's here with you always. That's why when we look at the book of Judges and we look at Gideon, not often do we heard the word Gideon. I know you check in the hotel rooms and you see a Bible in the drawer. And what does it say on it? Gideon's Bible. <laughs> But Gideon, in the book of Judges, he's a man who God had to get his attention. Gideon, Judges chapter 6, and let's look down at verse number 11. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you that you will cover us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that's welcome in this house. Teach us, Father. Show us, Father. Deliver us, Father, from those things, Father, that we sometimes wander away from, and that's you. We give you the power and the glory to rescue us in Jesus' name. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abyssalite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you Mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all of this happened to us? And where are all the miracles which our fathers talked about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But how the, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest of Manasseh. And I am the least of my father's house. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the, defeat the Midianites as one man. Isn't it interesting how as we read this, to me verse 13 just jumps out at me. Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with me, why has all of this happened to us? If you've ever read a scripture, a few scriptures, and you listen to a message or two, you would have heard these words, these promises from God. The Lord is always with you. You can't go too far in any direction in the Bible. And not be reminded of the fact that God declared he will always be with you. He tells us in Psalm 23, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. 
Jesus, as he was ready to ascend into heaven, and he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. And we're reminded of Joshua. Now, as he was with Moses, and he said, he, the God said that I will be with him today as if, as if I was with Moses. You, he's going to be with you today like he was with everybody in the Bible. So if you came here today, this morning, and you say, I felt a little hopelessness. I felt like, where is God? Where, where is God in my life? You came to the right place. Psalm 129 tells us, he said, where can I go from your presence? Nowhere. Have there ever been a storm in your life and you didn't know where God was in your life? See, I can tell you for myself that I, I, I can say that. I, I can say amen. That there's been storms in my life that I wonder where was God? But there are some seasons in our life that seems like God is nowhere to be found. Time when you felt all alone in a situation, the anguish and despair just seemed to ooze out of your heart. Have you ever been in a place where you felt God wasn't there? The Bible tells us that Job felt like that as he was losing everything. In Job 28, 23a, he said, I looked for him and could not find him. I looked in front. I looked behind. I looked to the left and I looked to the right. And God was nowhere to be found. Oh, and if you don't remember that, remember Jesus Christ. As he hung on the cross. And what did he say? Oh, God, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Why have thou forsaken me? So if you ever felt like you didn't see God and God wasn't around, you're not alone, my brothers and sisters. There's some pe per pretty important people in the word of God who said, I felt the same way. At some point, we all have to ask the question, God, where are you? Why are you letting this happen? happen. Well, if you ever felt like that and you look at the at, at your distance cousin, I'm gonna call him our distance cousin on our father's side. And, <laughs> and, 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 and we're gonna look at what he went through and the questions he asked. At some point we gotta realize Gideon is just like us. Yeah, he was looking for the Lord, but as we follow the story in chapter 6, in verse, verse 1, it talks about how the Israelites was taken out of captivity. They were taken out of slavery. But God gave them some instructions of things not to do, and they disobeyed. So God let his hands off of them. Do you want God to take his hands off of your life? No. No. So God said, as long as you do what I say do, then I'll keep my hands upon you. So what happened was it wound up that, that God had placed them in the hands of the Midianites. And they oppressed and grew and they grew so bad that they had to hide in caves. The enemy destroyed their crops and wasted their land until the people of Israel were poverty stricken. This happened because God was no longer covering them since they had departed from his covenant. It's a reminder that when we stay, when we stray from the Lord, he will sometime allow a crisis in our lives to compel us to return. God reminds us through these, through the prophet, that, that all, that God is with you. God will deliver you. God deliver you from slavery. He brought you out of these things. And you ask the question, where is he now? My brothers and sisters, I think we all can feel that way sometimes. Where is he now? Gideon had to go to the wine press to thresh the wheat. Normally, it's in an open place 
where the, bree where the breeze grow blowing. And, and the shaft is blowing all over the place because that's the husk that's around the seed. Amen? So now he got to hide in a place where he normally, that's not where you, where you press, we press wheat. You thresh wheat. It's not where you normally do it. So they had to hide from the Midianites. And there he was, hiding. And the angel of the Lord showed up and said, God is with you. Now, notice Gideon, Gideon did not respond with a hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. No, he didn't do any of that. No, he asked a question. If the Lord be with us, then why are we going through all of this? Don't mistake, don't make the mistake and think that the presence of a problem is synonymous with the absence of God. Don't make that mistake. And when you lose sight and sense and security of God, you lose hope for tomorrow. And that's when you feel like huh, everything is not going to be all right. Because you lose sight and sense of the security of God. That's a dangerous place to be. And when I came by today, I want to give you that hope that God has not forgotten you. God will always disclose his presence in your life. Let me share these three ways that God will show his presence in your life. And we can go on and get some chicken and some and a brunch and have my mosa. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> and enjoy your day. So now. How do you know God is with you? Because the first thing you got to understand is that he's proven it in the past. Has he ever brought you through something? Have you ever wondered where was God in your life and it was a storm in your life and something was going on and you said, Lord, help me. And he brought you through it. Look where you are today. I, I, I know some of us dealing with some sicknesses and things, but but it hadn't always been like that. Gideon asked a question that had his answer built into it. He said, if the Lord was with us, why then is this happening? And where are all the miracles which our fathers told us about? Saying, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us to the hands of the Midianites. And you know, the angel of the Lord didn't even respond to that. You asked where the Lord is, and then you said the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Wait a minute. You asked where was the Lord then, but now you're asking where is the Lord now? If you had good sense, <laughs> I mean, just common sense, it would tell you God is with you right now. Amen? No matter what you're dealing with, God is right there with you. Gideon should have known God was with him. Even though trouble was all around him, he should have known God was with him. God has already gone. If you don't remember what happened yesterday, how are you going to understand what's going to go on today? What the law has already done, he knows, this, you know, it's the same God that brought you through Egypt, Gideon. It's the same God that will carry you through whatever you are dealing with right now. And I just want to tell somebody here today, the Lord has been working in your life for a long time. The Lord has been answering your prayers for a long time. The Lord has been fighting your battles for a long time. The Lord has been making a way out of no way for a a long time. Is anybody here can declare the Lord has been moving in their life 
For a long time? Then why today do we ask, where is he? Do you think the Lord didn't know a storm was coming when he told the disciples to get in the boat? Do you, do you think that Lord didn't know the rain was going to come down when he told Noah to go build an ark? See, his hands has always been on your life as long as you can live. God's hand has always been there. Now we can wander away and we can pull ourselves away from him. But his hands are still there reaching out for us. Just in case you've forgotten, I haven't. There's a time in my life when I wasn't living right and the Lord was still in my life. Bringing me through a tornado. Bringing me through a car wreck. Bringing me through guns being fired all around me. Hanging out with me and my friends as we were drinking a little bit too much and didn't know how we got home. The Lord has to be with us no matter where we are. <laughs> I don't know if I should share this story with you, but I am. See, I was raised in Dallas. And, and we had a little thing where we had to go across the bridge. Anybody in Dallas know what you mean by going across the bridge? You, you couldn't buy alcohol over here. So you had to drive across the bridge. You had to drive across the bridge. And because I had a little hair on my face, uh huh, a little. Spotty hair on the bottom of my face here. I wasn't quite 21 yet. But I was always the one to go in to the little store and purchase the liquids. That's what I did. And I, you know, and you walk in the store, you got to you gotta act like you belong there. You know, you couldn't go in there going like. I walk in there. You know, here's the money. And me and my buddies, we would go get in the car and go to the party, and boy, we would have fun. And this is being foolish children. And we would have a good time. And, you know, back then, uh, today we have what we call designated drivers. I was a designated driver. Because I had enough sense not to go too far. I, I had enough sense. Not to just keep going, and when I know there was a limit, ah, I better stop right there. And like Jesus said, he never lost one, one sheep. Guess what? I never lost one of my friends. Every time they would went too far and they would get so in, out of it, I would get them in the car and I would take them home and put them at their front door and push them in. <laughs> we were done. I even take my buddy's car home to him the next day. Because God was watching over me. Even when I wasn't doing the right things, God was still watching over me. God's been doing this for a long time. He's been watching over us for a long time. Jesus said, I have never lost a one, and I can say, neither have I. Looking back, I think about those times, uh, and, and, and some words came to my mind as I was thinking about those. You know, the Psalms 116.6 says, the Lord protects the simple and the childish. I, I like this one better. The Lord protects the drunk, the fools, and the children. Now, I may have been two out of those three. <laughs> I may have been. But I look back to see God was still with me, holding me up. So no matter what goes on in your life, don't ever forget. Look back at the past of what God has proven in the past for you. Look at what God has already done. So now that you're here in this situation here, I got to believe he's going to continue to help me. Amen. Prove, proven in the past of what he's done. And he is with us 
<laughs> Here's the, this to me is the best part of it. Because of the people he placed around us. Amen? What Gideon is about to learn, although that he didn't count everybody, that there are some people that you can actually count on. There are some people that are equipped to stand next to you when the battle is going on. God works through others to work on you. God worked on Elizabeth to help Mary faith that needed strengthening. Amen. Amen. God helped the children of Israel, Israel as Moses as he raised his hand on top of the hill. And as he raised his hand, the battle was furious. But as soon as he got tired and his hands started to drop, they started to lose the battle. So God sent him Aaron and her to hold his arms up so they could continue the battle. He put people around you to help you when you're at your weakest. Have you ever had anybody bless you right at the right time? That came through for you when you couldn't even come through for yourself? We give thanks to God for all kinds of stuff. We give thanks to God for houses. We give thanks to God for cars, for clothes, for food. But sometimes we just need to give thanks to God for the people in our lives. I thank God for my mother and father who never, never stopped trusting me. I thank God for a dear friend of mine named David Strider. He introduced me to Maranatha Community Church, and there I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I give thanks to a dear friend of mine named Jude Walker, who had induced me to a school to go back and get my degree in theology. Amen. We went to class together. I give thanks for him. I give thanks for James K. McKnight who drove 1,500 miles to be with me as we prepare to, 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 to bury my mother. I give thanks to a friend called Samuel Ray High, who I met in the ninth grade, who lives out here in California with us. And anytime I'm at a low point, I can call Sam up, and boy, he lifts me up. He's about 6'9", and I'm looking up at this massive man. I feel like a little kid around him. I mean, it's amazing how my daughters know he, he's a real tall guy. I give thanks for him. I give thanks for my sisters and my brothers, Cassandra, O'Shea, and Eddie, who always protected me. When I would do homework, I don't remember my mother ever checking my homework. My brother and my sister made sure I got my work done. I had to come in and show them my report card first. <laughs> because they what? They loved me. They cared about me. They wanted me to succeed. They wanted me to do something with my life. I, I, I looked at them. And I said, thank you, Lord, for my brothers and my sisters. I'm thankful for my children and my grandchildren. For the love around them, I'm thankful for my nephew Amir. He's really my cousin. Who come down to take care of me, to look, watch over me. And most of all, I'm thankful to all of you. All of you. Who surround me with your love. When times were tough. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank all of you for being there for me. What he did, he surrounded me with love. Look, take a moment and just look around the room. Look at the person to your right. That person loves you. He loves you. She loves you. She's there for you. God brought her into your life to protect you and to help you. God did all of this to surround us with some people. It's going to get us through it all. To let you know he heard your prayer. 
You, you, you came to church to hear a message and in it, he get all in your business. Amen. It's like he's talking directly to you sometimes. Amen. God is in your life and he has proven in the past and he has placed some people in your life. But finally, he's promises he's prepared for you. He's promised some things for you. He said, I'm going to leave you with these promises. Chapter 60, verse 12, the angel showed up and said, the Lord is with you. Chapter 13, Gideon said, how can the Lord be with me when I'm going through all of this? Then in verse 14, the Lord showed up and said, you will defeat the Midianites. The angel spoke in verse 12, but God spoke in verse 14. To make Gideon a promise that he will defeat those that are oppressing him and his family. The Lord is making his presence known to Gideon. He's also making it known to you. How you know God is with you? Because the promise of God reveals the presence of God. God does not lie. And if he said I will do it, you can go to the bank on that. You can count on that. He's doing that for you. He's preparing Romans 8.28 for you. So that all things work together for good. And if you wonder if the Lord is in your life and he's helping you, he's, God is finishing up Psalm 30 verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And if you're still wondering what the Lord is doing, he is finishing up Philippians 419. Where he said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And you wonder why the Lord, where the Lord is. He is finally putting the final touches on Proverbs chapter 3 verse, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And he's hanging out in 1 John chapter 3. Beloved is not yet revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed... We shall be like him and we shall be we shall see him as he is. That God is preparing his word. He's showing you that he is still with you. His preparation of his promise is an indication of his presence. If you see the signs, you should know he's on his way. You ever been driving down a dark highway and trees are up all around? There's some places in East Texas driving down to my dad's hometown. And it's just a two lane road. Mm -hmm. And these trees are, I'll tell you, 50 feet high. And the moon can't get through because these trees are all over the road. And you're driving down this highway and it's dark and it's night and all you can see is your headlights and you're driving down the street. And all of a sudden this sign pops out of nowhere. Curve. <laughs> so you go a little further. There's a curve. He <laughs> gave me a warning back there. And you drive down a little further and you see another sign pop up. Boop, railroad crossing. There's no gates to come down. It's just a crossing. And you slow down and you look. You go across the railroad track. And you keep driving down this road and you see this one sign that says detour. It's going to take you off the road through some things and get you back. But you keep following the sign. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to get you back on track. If you follow the signs of God, he'll put you back on track. He will. No matter how the signs you may be distracted by. But if you take the time to open up the word of God and read it. God might be trying to give you a sign. So here's what God left with Gideon. And I want to leave it with you. You will get the victory. 
Because the Lord will be with you. Whatever is awaiting you today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, you can handle it. Because God is with you. And when you have doubt in your memory, when you say, ah, where's the Lord? Look back at the past of what he's already done. Look at the people that he's already surrounded you with and look at his promises where he said, I would never leave you or forsake you. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 This week, see my daughter knows this. These are words I've asked myself. Lord, where are you? If I wasn't talking to you, I would talk to myself. Because I've asked these questions. But then I stop and I look around. And I see where he brought me through. I gave an example of West Dallas and things like that, you know, where I was crazy doing silly stuff. He brought me through all that. And we probably have some stories similar of what he brought you through. Don't ever, ever doubt that he's with you right now. The pain you're going through sometimes, he's with you. The loss of a loved one, he's, he's still with you. No matter what the pain or how deep it may get, he's going to get you through tomorrow. What's the word say? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Don't you look forward when that morning comes? Amen. Amen. Let's think about it. Let's focus on it. Don't let the world tell us what is important. Let God. Pick up his word, read it, study it, live by it, and look for the signs that he's already laid out for you. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, Father, for forgiveness of our sins. God, we thank you, Father, for those little ones, Father, those the children that are coming up right now, Heavenly Father. We, follow, we pray, Father, we can be the parents and grandparents and guardians and to these children that they know what, they, what thus saith the Lord. The word said, raise up a child in the way he should go so when he is old, he will not depart. God, we pray for them. Yes, Lord God, we want to take that knowledge that you have, have bestowed upon each and every one, and we want to share that with someone else. Touch someone, Father. Let your voice, let our voice, Heavenly Father, be a voice of reason, of understanding, of love, of caring, of knowledge, of who you are in our lives. And Father, we say thank you for it. Bless our people, Heavenly Father. Touch those under the sound of my voice, Heavenly Father, and those that may have tuned in on this prayer line. Yes. We ask for that yes. in the name that's above all names, yes. in the name of Christ. Amen, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this, this morning. I'd like to make sure I give you never an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Is there anyone who have not accepted Christ and you want to make that your quest today? I would like for you to just come forward and we will receive you and pray for you. Amen. Will there be anyone? I know we don't have a lot of people here, but we have a lot of love. And if you're here and you want to make this your church home, we would love to 
as I look around, I see everybody, <laughs> everybody's family. It's all family here. And we're thankful for that. As we prepare to give today, I just want to ask that you would think seriously about your giving. I, I, I know grocery prices are a little high right now, amen? Have you noticed the grass prices, gas prices come down? Under, three, under four bucks. Up on Salasa. Under four. Right on Salasa. Under four bucks. I, I just bought it yesterday. <laughs> Amir told me about that. Yeah. And I know things are tough. I know things are tight. I know it. I know it. I know it. I feel it every single day. I'm retired and my little income is... You know, you know what I mean? But still, the church is in need. The church is in need. I always say, give your best gift to God. Because guess what he gave us? He gave us his best gift. He gave us his son. And if he can do that for us, the least we can do is give a little back to him. Amen? All right? The kids? Give them an opportunity. Yeah. To give? Yes. So oh. Okay. You guys have your envelopes ready? Children? Oh, okay. All right. Well, ushers, when you come and serve the people, I want you to make sure you serve the young people over here, okay? Do not forget our young people. Father, we thank you for this time to worship you and to serve you, Heavenly Father. Father, we lift it all up to you and we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Ushers, please come.
bless this offering of your people in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Got it? I got it. As we prepare for our communion, We, um, we understand what the communion represents. It represents the broken body of Christ. It represents the blood that was shed for our sins. I always re think back and I read the word of God uh, and we saw the sacrifices of a lamb all through the Bible. But then after Christ died, we didn't see any more sacrifices. Even though they won't call him the, 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 the savior, they knew that he was that last sacrifice. So make sure we understand how important it is as we drink this juice and eat of this cracker that it represents Christ dying for you, his body broken for you. You, amen. amen. What's the song you, we, we sing? We play. Um, um, which one is that? Uh, that do a communion. The blood. The blood. The blood. Th this song is one of those songs that I hear. I, I, it makes me cry <laughs> because if you listen to the words of it, it really touches your heart that Jesus shed for you way back on Calvary. Amen? I love it. Let me get my gloves on. For as I receive from the Lord that which I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup of my new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Ushers, please come.
I see we have some new cups. They're a little different to you. To, you want to try one of these? The old ones? <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get the little plastic film off. But anyway, let's raise our wafers up. Father in heaven, we, this represents your broken body, the, the broken body of Christ that was given to us. Father, as we eat this bread, we want to remember, Father, that you died for us on the, on the cross. And we lift you up and we thank you for it. And as we break this cracker, we want to say thank you now. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we lift up this cup, we want to say, Lord, this represents the blood that was shed for each and every one of us for the remission of our sins. Father, we thank you, Father, for the sacrifice you made for us. And we give our love and our honor and all to you. And all that we have belong to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us drink. Thank you all for being here today. And we got out an hour and a half. Look at there. We, we're right on time. Normally when I preach, we get out early, huh? Have you notice that? I told you I had a few words to say. <laughs> but anyway, just thankful to you. Uh, thank you for uh, the word that I pray that we all can use. You know, we, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as we prepare to depart today, I just want you all to just think about how, what differences can you make? What, what can you do to bring a little sunshine, a little smile to someone else's face? Amen? Amen. Because Amen. Amen. I tell you, it's a, if you drive around the streets today, you see the homeless folks. I tell you, it's the despair and the anguish in their eyes are are amazing. Y'all hear that? Anyway. Amen. <laughs> and God bless you. Let us stand, please. <laughs> and the Father, we thank you for another day we come to worship you and to serve you. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you will do in our lives. Continue to watch over us, Father, as we go out today. Let us leave this place, but never leave your presence and understand who we are in you. And you'll never leave us, nor forsake us. It's your promise to us. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go, have a great day. Have a great week. <laughs>